That is the craziest microphone I've ever seen. This is a crazy mic. Did you get bruised? Yeah, I've had a whole makeup change since. Hair and makeup. All right, where's the camera? You've got two cameras on you, actually. I like that. So that's one, and then that's one? Yeah, this one is the live stream one. And are we live, Scott? We're live. Okay, so we're live, we're live right now. Hi. So, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Thank Good. you so much for joining everybody. Of course. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you want to check out, everyone is really giving this mic lots of attention. I, it's basically a I, podcast I'm, mic. So. I'm, I'm good with, I'm just going to look at it. Okay. I'm going to see you hold, it's, that's insane. That's yeah. a big, white <laughs> microphone. All right. Okay, so uh, Christopher Plaha. Yeah, well done. Yes, plain, so, did I do well yeah, with the, really the pronunciation? Yeah, do people mess today, up All the time, yeah, the woman who I ordered flowers from today, she was like, so, she was afraid to say the last name. She's like, so, how do you spell it? And I said, she's like, how do you say that? Yes. And you said it right, Palaha. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We should probably point out to everyone who's watching, too, that you do have a bruise on your face from the makeup department, right? From, from you. Oh. She did it because I wouldn't, uh, with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Good, answer my question. <laughs> yeah, no, it's makeup. Awesome. It's makeup. Hey, man, I, if you don't mind, we're going to just kind of jump right into it because, okay. um, a, as you guys all know, Christopher is playing John Galt, and uh, there's a ton of excitement about your character uh, out in the message boards. Um, people are anticipating who you are. Um, some people may know you from The Ringer, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's something yes. I've done. And, and some, yeah, some other projects yeah. as well. Yeah, Life Unexpected, or Sure. There's a whole, uh-huh. a whole list. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And, and so when you found yourself going into audition for this role, mm-hmm. um, tell me about the experience. I mean, it was a really simple experience. It was like any other, really. I read the script. Um, it sounded a lot like uh, there was a, a really clear voice, you know, in the writing came out to me. And I said, you know, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to try something. Uh, which I heard Robert Redford, like I heard his voice as I was reading it. Read, like as I was going through, I was like, this mm-hmm. kind of sounds like, like, I'm going to do it like Redford. So I just went in and, you know, was kind of calm. It was just, a, I just did my thing. And it was Harmon was in the audition and uh, the director, Jim Minera. Yes. And Lisa Beach, the famous casting director. Oh, yes. And her dog. Um, and, Harmon uh, is, of course, one of the other producers who we've talked to on the live stream before. Yeah, you've seen, you guys know Harmon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach's uncle. Zach's been helping me out. Oh, right. He's my, that's your assistant's uncle. That's my assistant. Yeah, my that's, assi- right. that's my assistant's yes, uncle. Chris has, has an assistant, Zach. I have a monkey's uncle, and I have an assistant's uncle. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, so it was basically, it was a pretty self explanatory audition. I went in, I did what I thought, you know, was my take on it. Jim asked me to do uh, it louder because I have mm-hmm. a tendency to soft speak. Okay. Uh, and that's why we brought this big microphone, that's why, by the way. Right? The offensively large microphone is. Uh, and uh, and I did it again with a little more volume, and then um, I went home, and my manager called me, and he's like, I think I'm going to be able to call you with some good news today or tomorrow, and I kind of, wow. yeah, so it was a pretty quick turnaround. And cool. the, thing, but the thing about it was they called me up, I think my original appointment was 12.30, and they called me up and said, can you meet at 11.15? That, you know, they have to do something, they have to go, and I said, I, can't, I don't think I can. I mean, I'll, well, I'll get there when I get there, and if it works out, it works out. So yeah. I happened to get there at 11.15, and it worked out. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you get nervous in that you just made me hearing about your audition process made me a little nervous? Did it? Do you get nervous? I don't anymore. No, no. Yeah. I think as an actor, you know, you have. I, I regardless if you're a working actor, or if you're a you know a dude who's trying to make it, or like mm-hmm. you have so few opportunities to try as many different characters. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. what auditions become is your chance to have a performance, like especially if you you know if you grew up in the th- if you're just used to acting all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a chance to play these guys, and it's kind of like it's your 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 little moment. So I personally, I don't get nervous. I like auditioning, which is weird, but great. Yeah, I don't mind it. Awesome. Okay, I love to hear that. All right, and then so you secured the role. Your manager called you, said, "Hey, guess what? You got John Galt." And um, now we're 16 days into shooting. We're yeah, wrapping up wow. the film. Yeah. And and so as you look back, and I know you're still in it, but what's been the most challenging thing about playing this character? Uh, that's a good question. I think the most challenging thing about playing John Galt, aside from the fact that there is this, like you said, this sort of large anticipation of who this character is, I think for people who 
uh, Ayn Rand is an important you know, writer and the philosophy, the objectivism is important to them. I think they've sort of raised John Galt up to sort of, you know, Go mythic back. proportions, right? Okay. And so you don't want to, to be the actor that falls short. Uh, you know, so that, but, but I didn't really, I haven't considered that. It's just, I meet a lot of people, like I've met a lot of people on set and I've, mm -hmm. I've felt this sort of enthusiasm in it. And it's, I'm always like, I'm just, they're like, you're John. I'm like, no, I'm just Chris just Palaha, kid with a hard name to pronounce. But so that, so that, uh, that is one thing. And then the other thing was, again, this, this choice that I made to play this guy, it falls so far out of my wheelhouse of what I like to do normally, which is almost like if you had to, it's like, uh, you know, there was a, the, the two the painters had movements. There was naturalism and realism. And realism was like making things look real, but naturalism was to go and make it natural and make it, you know what I mean? So with acting, it's like a lot of acting we see is, I don't know, it's too long and too boring. But so I try to be really naturalistic and I try to interact with the props. And I, when someone says something, there's like, yeah. it's, it's you wrinkle up the page and you don't make it about, you know, it's not clean and it's it's unfocused energy, usually, what I do. Like if you saw Life Unexpected, Bayes was this really unfocused, uh, his character was sloppy. And it was the guy that I just played, uh, there's a movie I just did in November. Um, he, his thing, it's, you know, so this is a huge contradiction to all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was, frankly, a little insecure week one because I was worried that it was boring. And I'm still worried that it's a little boring, but people reassure me that it's not. But we'll see. I guess the yes. verdict's still out. I think it's totally natural to have, you know, some doubts when you put yourself out there as an artist about yeah. how things are coming across. Um, I think that's perfectly natural. So speaking of Ayn Rand, um, I understand that you were influenced by the book Fountainhead in particular. Yeah, I, uh, I, she did have an influence on me at one point in my life. I read it. A girlfriend of mine gave me a book uh, right after I graduated from college. Pam. Pamela. <laughs> Smart girl. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, here, you should read this. And I read Fountainhead. And uh, Howard Rourke, you know, that character, spoke to me as a young actor because it was um, the idea of artistic integrity, the idea of like you do something because you want to do it, you have a voice, you have something that you want to say. And that was, you know, something that was driven into me as an actor, as an acting student at NYU. Like they're always saying like, why are you special? Because, you know, you're one in... There's thousands of you. Yeah, right. well, no, but I mean, right. yeah, that's the yeah, thing. Like, are. you know, you're a white guy with brown hair, you right. walk into a room and there's... How many white guys with brown hair? Why Almost are you? As many as, yeah. uh, you know, how blonde many 30 something blonde right. girls yeah, are there? Right, yeah. right, right. Thousands. So, yeah. why? And yeah. then what you do realize all of a sudden is that in all of the history of all of the world and all the future history of all, the, you know, the future of all the world, there's only one you. Like your DNA, specifically the way you see it, all that stuff is special to you. Mm -hmm. And so, I think after having four years of that, reading The Fountainhead kind of, it, it was an interesting way to catalyze it for me. I was like, oh, that makes sense as an artist. Like, you have value, stand up for the ideas that you believe in and just push forward, even if everyone around you is saying, you know, sell out or change your way, whatever it was. So it, yeah. it, it, did, uh, it did have a pretty cool impact on me. Neat. It's neat to hear that that art, art, art impacted your artistic life. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. Back yeah, it really did. So when this came around, I was, mm -hmm. obviously I knew of Atlas Shrugged, I knew of Ayn Rand. Um, I, to be really honest with you, didn't know. I knew that there was... Atlas Shrugged 1 and 2 because I'd kind of seen little, you know, tidbits about it. Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point there was a lot of press about, I thought that there was a movie already made with Angelina Jolie about it. Um, so, sorry. I'm He's just checking, checking his fan out. mail, guys. Yeah, it's right. it's constant. When you're Christopher Plaha, it's like, Galt, you know, you blow, you just blow up all the time. Uh, no, but... Uh, Who's calling you, John? Who is, who is calling? Uh, so... Yeah, so I, I was aware of this project, and I was yes. like, didn't they make it? Didn't, oh, isn't there already a... And so then when I realized that it was part three, and they'd done yes. one and two, I was the able to kind of... Yeah. So then, obviously, now I'm segueing, but when I read it, and then they, when I saw John Galt as the character I was going in for, I was like, mm -hmm. this is awesome. I'd love to, yeah. you know? And of course, your expectations are kind of low at that point. When you walk in, you're like, well, it's John Galt, you know? Do I really... Like, am I really going to play John Galt? <laughs> And then guess what? And then you do. Yeah. And yeah. then you put on a leather jacket. And then you look like you get a jokes. face bruise. You get you beat up by a pretty blonde with a giant microphone. Bam. So um, I just keep coming back to uh, just the excitement I think that is generating around this film um, coming out in September. And um, so 
is there anything else that's been just particularly exciting to you in terms of working on this movie? Have you had any connection with the fans, with um, any of the message boards, or no? I've, um, I avoid people coming to set, though. You said yeah, I avoid people though at all costs. Oh, now Christopher, yeah. that's a very you know. Anti- is that true? Anti-social stance. No, I. You know what? I keep, I keep Zach around. To keep, he's a buffer yeah, between. Zach's good. Can we have Zach make a little cameo right yeah, now? Zach, get in here. Zach, right? get over here. here. So this is the first assistant I've ever had in my life. I'm oh, not saying that he's gonna. Yeah. Get He's not gonna be the last, but Zach's ahead of the world. There's the live stream. He's not gonna be the last. <laughs> On your way out. <laughs> That's what a Hollywood assistant looks like, ladies and gentlemen. There it is, in the flesh. This is Zach. Yes. Girls, he's single. Relatively reliable. <laughs> I try. You know, that's all you can ask. Good, um, good for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Go yeah. Get, yeah, get, get, get out of here. Go work. Um, go work. He's got to run and get me a coffee. Yes. So. Um, um. You know what I what I'd love to ask you too is how can people um connect with you? Um. Should they go to the? F- I mean, Facebook mm-hmm. is a great way to get a hold of me. I'm Sweet. on Facebook, and there's like a fan site. That's the one to use. Um, Twitter, and I guess it's K Palaha, K Palaha Twitter. K Pal- at K Palaha yeah, on Twitter, guys. One. I'm gonna reclaim it. It's there's a fake one that's they not do mine. That. Yeah, then I they act. There's like the wi- the real Will Ferrell. Or yeah, and they're the talking as me. It's weird. It's like they're Isn't like, it? hey, I'm back. I'm like, hey, it's, who are you? It's weird. Who are you? Get off Facebook or Twitter, whatever it yeah. is. Anyway, um, but the cool thing about no, so I don't interact with a lot of people that way. Uh, mm-hmm. The people who have, I have no idea about objectivism. I didn't know anything about objectivism when I, when I started this project. And uh, libertarianism is something else that I didn't really have a full comprehension of before I started this project. And, you know, and i got to be honest with you, uh, my political beliefs have always sort of, there's a, you know, and I'm finding that I'm, there a lot of the, I'm sort of, I, not, I'm not a libertarian per se, but I understand that a, a pretty I understand that a lot. And it I sounds it. like it's really, I, I think that's a really honest um, um, perspective. And it sounds like it's having an effect on Yeah, you. yeah. And I think, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Like, there's a book called The Week that I get every week. Um, the magazine. It's the magazine. I read it too. It's yeah, awesome. it's a great magazine, it's right? Great. Yeah, it and it sums up, so up all the things. news and it's the left and it's the right. right and it kind of, yeah. And yeah. I started this project and every week inside this magazine there's an article about uh, one was either the white ghetto which was it's a stretch of land that you know goes from Kentucky to southern New York and it's about how it used to be a coal you know coal uh, mining was the main predominant business and industry and then how the government put all sorts of regulations on that and how the coal industry moved away and how these people are on the draw or the dole and they're being paid out by the government to just you know I mean, that's crazy then there's I mean so all of a sudden you st- when you start understanding from one point of view which is Ayn Rand's and uh, how business works and how a big you know and then you start seeing other things and how it has a real effect I mean it's just interesting we're in interesting times and it's it it's relevant so you know yeah. and I think like anything you know, you know you take some of it and you leave some of it but you know obviously people who know me as a uh, an actor who are you know fans of mine like I'm a deeply religious person so mm. that's where I would stray from objectivism because I think she was a a staunch, uh, you know, atheist or whatnot. So, but well, to but each his own. But it's exactly. it's great to yeah. um, to have the conversation and to hear uh, how this film has affected you and other people working on it and everyone surrounding the film yeah. and everyone out there on the message boards. Like, there's a conversation going on. So yeah, cool. which is cool. Yeah, exactly. Christopher Palaha, thank you so much. In the flesh, thank you. What? Thanks for having me. At K Palaha on Twitter. What do you like? Right. What about your Facebook? What do you like better, Twitter or Facebook? I don't see the Twitter thing is. I, I, here, I mean, I have it. It's pulled up. He's Let's checking. See. He's getting texted again. No, I'm not. I'm just by I'm ladies, sorry. lady fans. Yeah, my, my wife. My oh, wife. that's right. I'm so sorry. You are married, it's, and you have. Um, I have three uh, kids. You have three kids. Yeah, uh, no I'm lady sorry. fans here. No, that's not right. Probably, um, maybe. Do you have a little daughter? I don't. I have sons. Oh, you have three so sons. So this one, wow. this one cool. is mine. That's mine. That's real. Okay, so at K Palaha. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know okay. if you can see it or not. All right. But I don't even like. I'm I'm not good with it. I'm just not good about it. How about Facebook? A, and Facebook, I'm good about. It. Okay, so we're gonna take a picture and we'll like post it guy. on Facebook. <laughs> I'm an old married man, so I just fa- right. I just post That's Facebook right. things. Oh. Well, thank you to your wife and kids for letting us borrow you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You're welcome. Yep. For this film. All right. Thanks.
Thanks so much.